light on my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is it. No, that's the wrong Sam. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. <laughs> All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this was the Shepherd Psalm. We talked about that today in the lesson study. And every time you hear the Shepherd Psalm, many of us, you would know it, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And it all sounds beautiful. Even until when you get to verse 4, uh, the, well, the latter part of verse 3, um, he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And from the onset, you look at that text and you look at that line, and it looks like a very pleasant experience. Paths of righteousness. But I'm here to propose that it isn't what it looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Bread at Home podcast where we're hoping you could find in this line, in this text, a private application for your situation. Let's, let's talk about this. And we'll be very short today. Um, what hit me with that text was, he leadeth me into paths of righteousness for his namesake. But here's what follows. As soon as the author is finished saying that, here in it, it says in verse 4, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. There is a journey in the text. There's a movement in the text. And I think it's important for us to know in our Christian journey. We may be on a path of righteousness. But yet still, that seems to lead us into valleys. Or at least, not lead us into valleys. But in our journey, we end up in valleys, the ebbs and flows of this Christian life. And you find yourself right in a rough, dark, uncomfortable place. And by rough, dark, and uncomfortable, I'm talking about moments in your life when you begin to think whether or not God is actually there. Far less to even question, are you even on a path of righteousness? I mean, a path of righteousness when, we're, I mean, we're just having the conversation. A path of righteousness when, I mean, it doesn't look so good at work. A path of righteousness when your health is on the decline. What path of righteousness are we actually talking about? Because it really doesn't feel that way. But maybe the more important question to ask, I'm supposing, would be, what makes it a good path of righteousness? What makes it a path of righteousness? And here's what I was able to uncover. What makes it a path of righteousness is the reason why you're on the path. Okay, okay, that was a little vague. So let me work back on that. Um, what makes it a path of righteousness is his name's sake. You cannot have, here it, here it is, your struggles without Christ and find righteousness. What makes it a path of righteousness is Christ. What makes it a path of righteousness is God. So let's if we had to work this back. Your health may be on the decline. And you don't know what is happening to you. It's difficult to even sense doctors can't tell you. Um, and they're just, you're, you're bothered and cumbered by the uncertain. You don't know what lays before you. And you don't know what's coming up next. But even in the midst of that uncertainty, even in those dark moments, when life seems to be against you, what makes that a path of righteousness is the God that you hold on to when that comes, when, when these situations come. It's very difficult to want to be going through rough times on your own because I do know that our society preaches, you know, um, you know, I got this, I'm going to get that bag, um, I will do it all by myself, that kind of Miss Independent, Mr. I got it all under control kind of vibe. And true to that saying, you don't. 
if you have, if anybody's worth their salt, at this point, if you're adulting in any way, you would know how, how little of control you have over your life's circumstances. That when some things come, they come. And what is more important is how you handle them. Now, for us as, you know, persons who believe in God, we do have, uh, if you believe in God, we have this advantage we find in Christ Jesus that makes our paths, which will likely be similar to that of the world, different, not because of the path, but because of the God who is with us in that path. And so what makes this paths of righteousness amazing is the fact that God is with us on it. And, and I'm hoping I'm doing justice to this thing, you know. Because right now, you might be on a path of righteousness. But it's difficult. Paths of righteousness are difficult. And here's for me the reason why. You get tested. The text goes on, I mean, yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I mean, we're talking about the shadow of death? <laughs> It, it, we're talking about moments that bring you close to your end, the shadow of death. You have to deal with that. And so wherever you are, I decided to stop by to say, hey, your rough moment, your seemingly insurmountable circumstance is a path of righteousness but what's beautiful is God leads you to that path of righteousness and the path of righteousness is an opportunity for you to choose God in the middle of your circumstances choose God while you still can't make your bills Choose God while your marriage might still be in the rut. Choose God while your children can't seem to be obedient. Choose God while you're still in that circumstance. And best believe, for his namesake, your path of righteousness will bring him glory. I said I had to come in here and talk about this. This in this empty auditorium. Because... Many persons are looking at their difficult situations and thinking that because they're in this crucible experience, that maybe God has left. That we, we get so caught up seeing our spiritual life in this hazy, uh, all rosy and dandy experience that we, we miss that, hey, this Christian walk is also one of difficulty as well. And that difficulty can be very burdensome that difficulty can lead us to question whether we even made the right decision to serve god whether we even made the right decision to go down that particular path and i'm saying when those moments come we should never decouple our relationship with god in the good times from our relationship with god in the bad times and that's where the message is. You are on a path of righteousness. God has led you on a path of righteousness. And not because it is difficult means that you are not supposed to be optimistic in that moment. Not because you can't see your way means or you don't have all the pieces lined up means you should begin to question God and doubt his presence in your life. If you know anything about the, shams, the, the, the shepherd psalm, it is that God is a shepherd I shall not want. God is our shepherd. And there's, person, there's a personal element to the text. God is our shepherd. God is your shepherd. You shall not want. And I mean, just permit me. Permit me to go on with this shepherd psalm for a little bit. You know what it's like for you to not want, boy? I, I mean, we live in a world where everybody want, 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 want. But no one's like for you to not want. Marinate on that for a bit. I mean, we read 
Uh, I, I read in this book that we are creatures of hope. We get one thing and then after we have arrived and we received it, a few months later, we want something else. Here's the penultimate place we arrive. That when we have God as our shepherd, after that, there is none else. When you hold on to Jesus in your trouble and circumstance, you will want nothing else. You wouldn't want more money. You wouldn't want more, more of anything that life has to offer. After you have Jesus, you will thirst no more. And there is somebody out here looking for some kind of happiness, looking for joy. And you've been missing it. Why? Because you haven't found Jesus. And if you've heard this, you're listening to my voice or you're watching this on YouTube, wherever you catch us from, I'll say this one thing. That when you find Jesus, you will want nothing. You will want nothing and he will lead you into places of beauty and places of pain. But regardless of the beauty and regardless of the pain, God is there. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Bread at Home podcast, the podcast where we hope that you found a private application for your situation. We pray that God blesses you richly in every single way. I suspect, listen, I suspect I end this episode a little too quick. <laughs> because there's a part, there's a thought that came to mind. I say I had to come back on and share it. Um, you would remember in the text that it says, uh, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. There's a tendency for persons to think that God leads you through the valley of the shadow of death. The text doesn't say that. The text says, Ye do I walk for the valley of the shadow of death. And I, th I thought it important to bring that home. Here's what this says. Even if I put myself in a... In, <laughs> even if I put myself in trouble, God is there. Even if I made a string of stupid decisions, God is there. That's what the text says. That's what the shepherd does. Because I mean, I mean, for those of you who know the role of a shepherd, dealing with sheep who are prone to wander, Lord, they feel it. Prone to leave the Lord, the God they love. I mean, sheep who, if you, if you have them in a rope, they will end up tangling themselves in some way and then the shepherd have to come and, and deal with them. And, you know, his rod and my staff will come with me. There's a part of the, of the, of, you know, of the, of the shepherd's, you know, rod, um, the part where he uses to bring, to, you know, hook the sheep, to bring them back into the fold. And, you know, the long part which he uses to guide them into the, into the you know, into the fold. When we find ourselves moving astray, God is there to bring us back in. And so I came back on, quite on a, on, uh, in an unorthodox, unorthodox way, to say, hey, here's what. You may be currently making a string of bad decisions, but here's the deal. God's rod and his staff will comfort you. And here's the other part about this I think we need to caption. When his rod and his staff comes through a word like this, or through a sermon, or through a, an elderly person, or through a friend, do not um, uh, despise the instruction. Because sometimes we expect that rod and staff to come in a particular way, but how the God decides to send it might be in a way that might help you to humble so that you might hear it from a person you don't even want to listen to. And I think we, some of us have some, we have some rod and staffs pending for us on this path of righteousness. Ah, give it time, ladies and gentlemen. Give it time.
give it time, that even if you may have been making bad decisions, even if you are responsible for where you are, you're in a relationship that you know you should not have been, but yet still you're there. God will help you there. God will help you in that situation and bring you out of it as he deems fit. Because yea, do I walk for the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end it this time and hopefully I ain't come back. This has been another episode of the Bread Home Podcast where I hope that you found again a private application for your situation. We pray that God richly blesses you in every single way.